Praise the Lord. Praise God. 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 Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Oh, we praise. Make it personal one time. I praise you, God. 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 Oh, I praise you, God. 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 I praise. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. Lord, I praise you, God. I praise you, God. Hallelujah. Thank God for his amazing grace this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. knows that you've been changed. Amen. Oh, my. 
Every day 
Lord, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's an honor to be able to bless him and to praise him. Amen. God's given me some word here this morning, pretty strong. But me being a preacher and evangelist and a pastor, I got to do what God says. Amen. So I know it's what he wants for the hour too. Amen. <coughs> praise God. And you want to follow along with me in your Bible. Lord, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Isn't it an honor to bless his name and to praise him and to worship him in the mornings and just feel that uh, something about a release that you can raise your hands and praise God and worship him and magnify him. Amen. You know, I'm going to talk about some stuff this morning that, you know, when we become a Christian, we're supposed to do some things. We're supposed to discipline ourselves. When we become a Christian, we are not that loose cannon that we was maybe when we... Uh, uh, was a sinner, you know what I mean? I've been there and done some of that. So uh, praise God when uh, God got a hold of me, of me, my life changed. Praise God, and I started disciplining myself, uh, and I started reading in God's Word and seeing in God's Word what He wanted me to do. And as I seen as His Word and seen what He wanted me to do, guess what it was? It was instructions in what righteousness. Amen. So that's what God wants to talk to us about this morning, instruction in righteousness. Now, I'll tell you right now, I have ministered on righteousness and unrighteousness. Praise God. Righteousness, the way I see it and the way I study it, is right standing before Almighty God. Amen. And unrighteousness is not standing right before Almighty God. So we want to look at some things this morning, just a few of the things. You know, in the New Testament, not counting the Old Testament, but the New Testament, there's over 1,500 uh, commandments in God's Word that we're supposed to abide by. He commands us to do certain things, and we got to do some of these things. Why? Because we're His children. And if we're His children, we're supposed to obey and do what we're supposed to do. Amen? So we, as God's uh, children need to look in God's commandments, amen, and see and obey his commandments. Why? Because it helps us. If we do the things God has asked us to do, it's going to help us. Amen? Praise God. Let's look here a little bit closer. You know, it's instructions in righteousness. Now, how are you going to know what God wants you to do if you become a Christian and don't get in God's word and read God's word? Amen? That's a big factor, isn't it? Amen. You know, God has given us some responsibilities that we need to do, and we need to look at them and obey them. Amen? You know, when you become a Christian, you got to discipline yourself. You know, there's some things you used to do before you became a Christian that you did, and it was wrong, and what it was doing, it was destroying your character. It was destroying your being. It was You was on a downward trend to destruction. That's what's going on. I know I've been there. But praise God, got a hold of God, and he changed my life. Amen? And he changed many of your lives in here today. And you folks on the Internet, I want to look at some things. You know, if we obey uh, and if we obey God's word, it brings reward, and it brings a relationship with God the Father. Amen? So we're supposed to obey God and what he has for us and what he wants us to do. Amen? And if you get in God's Word and look at it, He'll show you what to do. You know, the Word of God is inspired by God. It came, and He inspired men to write that Word down, what He said, and it's been standing for over 4,000 years, praise God. You know, there's plenty of evidence and documentation that this is the truth right here we're talking about, God's Word this morning. And you know, as Him being our Heavenly Father, guess what? When He comes at us, as our Father, He wants us to obey. Amen? Why does He want us to obey? Well, let me ask you a question. 
Why do you want your children to obey things and rules and regulations that you have in your house? Amen. <clears throat> we have rules and regulations in our house that God has given us uh, the spiritual, the fathers, especially the spiritual head of the household and the mamas too, to direct uh, our children and discipline them in a manner that's good for them because you want them to be raised up and grow uh, in a righteous way. Amen. But I tell you right now, if you didn't have that discipline, you would grow up and you wouldn't be in a righteous way. You see? You see what's going on here? So we're going to look at this today, and we're going to look at God's Word. And I'm going to ask Thelma, would you please sit beside those two? Thank you. We want discipline. I'm here to tell you, folks, and children and teenagers, you got to, you got to obey in school, haven't you? You got to obey certain laws in the land out there. If you don't, you get put in jail. All kind of stuff can go on, right? <laughs> now let's look and see what God has for us this morning. I know he's got something good, praise God. He wants me to minister this. You know, I'm going to start out, uh, oh, this is a good one right here. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 2 and 3, I'm going to read right here. Now, this is what God wanted me to minister on this morning. There's some more stuff in here we're going to get a little deeper in maybe, see what God wants. But uh, uh, I tell you, I'm just going to tell you right now, some of us need this uh, big time in here, and some of us uh, have seen this before and know. Some of us are in different spiritual levels than others, and we see that. But I'm here to tell you, we got some new Christians and folks in here. We got some people on the Internet but uh, not know. But I'll tell you this, God's given me this word, and he wants me to deliver this word. Amen. And I'm going to obey him. Let's look right here. Let's look at fornication. That's a real good one right there. And I want to tell everybody here this morning, you know, every one of us a Christian in here this morning we're just sinners that was saved by grace. Amen. Everybody in here this morning was a sinner, but you're saved by grace. God, praise God, had mercy and grace. My brother's talking about some this morning. Look here. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God has given us certain commandments that we must obey, folks. And if you don't obey those things, if my mother, she's not here. She's up in the mountains in a little brown church up there. We had a revival up there one time. Some of us went. We had a ball up there in that little brown church. That's what it was, little brown church. <clears throat> and she's in it this morning. She's not here this morning. She's up in the mountains. But if she's here, she'll tell you. She disciplined her son. She wore him out sometimes. And, uh, and my daddy, he didn't whoop me very much. But when he did, I remember it. Okay? I, I won't never forget. My mother ain't here. I can talk a little bit. I, I remember one time uh, I done got up in the teenage years, Steve, and I, they, they, they come down there at, uh, at my house in, uh, on Durham Street where I live. Sue, where's Sue? Raise your hand. I was raised with Sue up there on Durham Street, you know. And uh, they come down our street, and they dug a big old ditch out, B.R., and it was about that deep, and it went way on down the street, and they put these smoke pots in it, okay? And my mother told me because she knew. She said, son, if you go down there and get in them smoke pots and mess with them, I'm going to wear you out. See, my daddy was a truck driver. He was gone. But when he got home, mother would tell him certain things, and sometimes he'd wear me out. But mother had to be uh, the rule of the house right there. So I was coming along in age. I was probably a teenager, 12, 13. Well, needless to say, I went down there in them smoke pots in that ditch. Uh, and, boy, I got to playing with them smoke pots and knocking them over and everything. Man, I had a big fire going down there because the fuel oil fell out of one of them smoke pots. And, man, there was fire and smoke coming up down there. So I decided I better go home. So I just eased on back to the house and looked down the street and said, man, what's going on down there, you know? <laughs> well, guess what? My mother had been looking out the door paying attention to what was going on. So I come in the house and said, I told you, if you mess with them folk pots and mess with that down, I was going to get you. So she got the, 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 the belt out, the, the switch, and she started whooping me. She was wearing me out, but I done got about 12, 13 years old. And uh, she was whooping me, and then I started laughing. And then my mother started laughing. And we just laughed, and finally I realized, Mother, I'm sorry I did wrong. But at that time, Mother quit whipping me from that time forth because she knew that, hey, I was getting too old, and she needs to set me down and tell me what's wrong and what's going on in my life. And me, I need to start acting like an adult and obeying her, okay? So that's uh, what happened from there on. I'll give you another little incident story. One of my boys, he was 17 years old, and the rule was at my house, uh, 
You know, I done got on fire for the Lord, and the rule was the Lord's rules, you know, and you don't lay out at night and do stuff like that. Well, my oldest son, he done laid out one night. He was 17 years old. He was six foot four. <clears throat> and I'm daddy, okay? In my house, you obey the rules. And so daddy went in there with a switch and wore him out at 17 years old, put stripes on his legs. But let me tell you what happened there. God spoke to me, and he talked to me, and he said he's 17 now. Well, let me tell you what happened first. I wore him out. He didn't cry, but I wore him legs out good with a switch, and he knew, hey, you done. You broke a commandment. You broke a law in the house, and you got to pay the consequences. Well, I wore him out for it. Well, he run away from home. And the next morning I got up, man, he just tore me up. My son, 17 years old, done run away from home. I went in the living room and I cried and I started praying in, in tongues because you see, God knew what to pray for more than I did. And so God started praying in tongues for me and I prayed and finally the Lord said, listen, he's 17 years old now. Talk to him like a young man. Just tell it like it is. And so that's what I started doing. And we got along great after that. But there comes a certain time that that hard discipline uh, that I was giving him has got to change now. you got to be more mature. you got to be more responsible and get out of certain things going on in your life that you know is not right. And God's telling us this morning, if you got something in your life that ain't right, if it's a sin against God, you're going to have to suffer consequences and you better get out of it or you'll pay the penalty because there is a penalty for sin. And let's look at this sin right here. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Well, that's a big one right there. Now, I can get into more and more and more. I'm going to get into some God wants me to get into. Fornication, that's having a, a sex out of wedlock and doing things wrong. And it, it takes you on a destructive path. So if you ain't married and you're uh, uh, messing with a man or woman in the wrong way, you're going to suffer consequences because God has commanded us uh, not to do that. Now, everybody can look and say, hey, man, that's terrible. Let me remind everybody here in this morning again, I love you so much, but we're just sinners saved by grace. Amen? I want to keep reminding everybody, but I want to tell you right now, if you're in that sin, you better get out of it. Young people, if you're looking at that sin, get out of it because it'll bring a destructive path to you that you don't want to suffer and you don't want to get into. You'll get some uh, uh, whoopings that you can't imagine. You better stay out of it because God said, commanded to stay out of it. You know why? He wants to sanctify you. He wants you, you're a child of the king now. He sets you apart from all that. And he'll help you uh, uh, contain yourself and stay out of those things. If you'll ask him, he will help you. And I'll tell you right now, been going on since the beginning of time. But God says it's a sin. Why? Because it destroys the soul. It tears people's uh, character and belittles them, tears them down. I'm telling you, it brings destruction to your life. Let's go a little bit further right here and look uh, and see what God has. Amen? Thessalonians 5, 22. I'm going to look right here, but before I do, I want to talk to you a little bit. In Galatians 5, 19, the Word of God says, I don't think I put that on there, but if you want to read and study a little bit about fornication and about lying, about cheating, about stealing, about doing things of the evil things of this world, if you want to read a little bit more about it, look in the Galatians. It talks about a drunkard will not enter the kingdom of God. A liar will not enter the kingdom of God. Fornicators will not enter the kingdom of God. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21, you can see some of those things that God tells Hey, if you do these things, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. Now, let me tell you again. We all sinners saved by grace. Those who've got Jesus in our heart, amen. But you know, we had to come out of some of that stuff, but God forgave us for every bit of it, amen, because he's a good God and he loves us, praise God. But I'm going to get a little deeper in another one here that God gave me one that uh, really helped me in my life and my walk with him. And I pray if you will ask God, he'll show you what's, uh, uh, what he commands of you and what he expects of you. You're a child of the king. Just like my children as I was raising them up, I expected me them to mind my rules that was there. Why did I have rules? Because I knew those rules were good for them as they grew up. Amen. Praise God. Proud of him. 
Praise God. Those rules were for my good. I, you, you've heard the old saying, hey, don't touch uh, uh, that uh, pop belly stove. It's red hot and it'll burn your hand. Your mama and daddy tell you that, and you're going to touch that stove. You're going to find out when you, you think you know it all. Touch it. Oh, if I listen to my mom and daddy. You know, if I listen to my mom and daddy more when I was a young man, young, young girl, or I mean a young man, uh, like some of the young girls suffering, man, I'd have been a lot better. I'd have been a lot better, you know. Praise God. But I didn't. I was hard-headed, and I had pride in me. Going to do it my way. And when I got to, to a certain age, a teenager, whatever, Got to running around, and some of my friends ran around with this hoodlum. <laughs> oh, man. When I was 13 years old, I started doing hoodlum uh, things that I shouldn't be doing. But God got a hold of me, praise God. He had mercy and grace on me, and he loved me, and he showed me, started showing me the right way. Amen. Just like my mother and daddy tried to show me, if I had listened to my mother and daddy, they meant good for me. But I wouldn't listen. I was hard-headed and had pride. But finally, I got a hold of it, and I got a hold of the real thing. Amen? Got a hold of the real thing. Now, look at here. I want to read this one, this one coming up here. Whoa, this is good. This one, I, I could preach on it all day right here. It's talking about uh, uh, stay away from the appearance of evil. Now, that right there covers a lot, don't it? I'm going to give you a little bit of detail in here this morning about what the appearance of evil is. Now, I'm just going to start out right here. Let's look right here abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, if you really want to get in some good stuff, get in that First Thessalonians 5.22 and go back up to 19.20. Some of them make some more good stuff in there. But look here, abstain from all appearance of evil. Some of you heard this story before. You know, when I got saved and I was on fire for the Lord, boy, I just loved it, you know, and I was on fire. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I liked to drink, Adam. And so, you know, I was raised up in my family, you know, hey, you're going to, I quit drinking, except I had this, I had this struggle with alcohol. It's like uh, we'd go out to eat or something, you know, and have spaghetti. So, well, it won't hurt nothing to drink, a, uh, you know, drink a beer with a, uh, eating spaghetti. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That's, that's fine, ain't it? Ain't that okay? Uh-huh. Yeah, I see some of you laughing. I was trying to justify what I wanted to do. But let me tell you what God did. I kept struggling with that for a few months, you know. I'm, I'm growing spiritually with the Lord and everything, and I kept struggling with that, you know. And all of a sudden, the Lord told me, beyond a shadow of a doubt, just like he, matter of fact, he gave me this scripture. He gave me this scripture. I didn't, I, I read it, but I didn't, he brought it out to me. You see, if you read in God's word and you got something going on in your life that ain't right, you ask God and he'll show you and he'll help you get it corrected. He'll help you because why we're in the flesh, we're down here. Okay, some of you heard this story before, but all of a sudden, God got a hold of me, and he said, abstain from the appearance of evil. And boy, it just went right in my heart. And what is the appearance of evil? Well, let me ask you all something this morning. If I had a big old beer shirt on this morning, all tattooed out there and all that, would you want to hear me preach this morning? Uh-uh. Huh? Listen to this. Would you? You wouldn't, would you? Why? That's the appearance of evil, ain't it? Now, how is that big old alcohol booze shirt appearance of evil? Why? Why? I'm going to give you a little depth there. This is what the Lord showed me too. Alcohol is evil. Now, they say, oh, you can take some for medicinal reasons, and they do have some. I'm not knocking it in, a, in a, some, some kind of medicine or something like that. Pour it on a wound or something, kills germs. <laughs> But this is what God showed me to help me to quit drinking totally, not to be a sipping sink. And I know some sipping sinks, and I don't like it. It bothers me big time. They claim to be a Christian, but yet it's okay to go out and drink a little bit and booze up a little bit and get in the wrong crowd. That's wrong. That's not of God. If you're going to follow God, follow him all the way. Quit drinking. I'm just using that. Quit fornication. Quit lying. Quit stealing. Quit all of that stuff that's wrong. Now, let me run this by you here. So God told me, he said, uh, uh, abstain from all appearance of evil. So if I wrote, wore that shirt and teach Sunday school or, teach, or preach, you're not going to want to hear me preach. And if I was a sipping saint and all of a sudden I'm out at some place and, and all of a sudden y'all come in to eat or something, and there I am sitting over there drinking a little bit. Are you going to come? They, uh, it kills your witness, doesn't it? It destroys your witness. It don't work in God's world. 
God's world is the kingdom, and I'm in it, and you in it if you got Jesus in your heart. And if you've got problems doing that, God is a God that will help you quit that now. God had to help me. I'm going to be honest with you. I struggled with it for six months or a year after I got really on fire for the Lord. I struggled with that, but God helped me, and I got rid of it. Amen? And I settled it. When I got rid of it, I settled it. It's, I don't partake of that. I'm using this as an example. Refrain from the appearance of evil. Now, let me tell you what happens to I've seen them, I know them, I've had them in my family. An alcoholic can have everything. He can be a, a, a manager of three or four states. Uh, he can be on fire making all kind of money, driving the best cars and doing all that. And all of a sudden, the bondage and the demon of alcohol to get a hold of him. I got one in my family that happened to. It got a hold of him. He lost his job. He lost his uh, character. He lost his wife. He lost his children. All of that happened to him. He wound up going back to his family's house and his daddy was a church of God uh, preacher and his daddy had to call a law on him because he had the DT so bad they had to lock him up. He lost it all. Now, is that what can happen? Is that the appearance of evil and what? that's just the one example of where alcohol can take you to? I'm using that for uh, 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 an example this morning. I could get in fornication and, and all of that and AIDS and all of that diseases that come with all of that stuff. But, I, but the Lord wants to show you, abstain from the appearance of evil. Now, that's a big, that's a big one, isn't it? So if you go out that door out there and say, I'm going to go down here to my friend's house and they're going to have a party down there and get down and boogie, you don't need to be down there. Uh, we have to learn to say no to that and get out of that. I'm telling you right now, you need to learn because God's given us commandments and it's for your behalf that you obey this commandment. And let me tell you what, you ain't supposed to curse. You ain't supposed to come against your parents. If you want long life, children, don't curse your parents and down them. God will handle them if they're doing wrong and not doing right. God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord thy God. Did you know what a man sows, he reaps it? You sow good seed. I, I was listening to a preacher this morning. He was talking about sowing good seed and, or sowing seed and get some things about it. He, he made a comment that I liked. He said, you know, a farmer, he said he'll sow his seed and he'll come back to his house. He'll sleep like a baby. Why? Because he's got his seed sowed and he's got faith and confidence that that harvest and that seed is going to come up. Well, you can do that with God, see. You can sow your seed with God and say, God, I have chosen to follow you and to serve you, praise God. And, and I just want to uh, plant good seeds. I'm quit doing those evil things I used to do. I want to plant good uh, seed and not plant bad seed no more. And your harvest is going to come up good seed. Amen? Now, think about it. So if you got you into stuff like that and, uh, uh, you know, and I used to, I, I was in stuff like that. If you lie and cheat and steal and do all that stuff, you need to quit it. It's a commandment in God's word that you don't do that because it's good for you not to do that. It's the best way for your spiritual walk with the Lord and to live in the kingdom of his kingdom for eternity. Amen. Now, there's rewards for what we're talking about here. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I could go a little further on that appearance of evil. Boy, I could take that to a lot of more places. The appearance of evil abstain, stay away from it, stay away from it. Look at here. Now let's go a little bit further. Let's go into some of the fleshly lust that's out there in 1 Peter 2.11. Let's just look right here. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fresh, fleshly lust, which war against the soul. You see, when you sin and do these things, if you lie, uh, cheat, steal, commit adultery, do those things and drink, it's warring against uh, your soul, and it's a warring against the kingdom of God. It don't, they don't mix. They don't mix. I'm here to tell you this morning, praise God, he loves us so much that he has provided a way for you out of it. When you become a Christian, you get in God's kingdom, praise God, and God said, I'll never forsake you, and I'll never leave you. And if you get tempted on lust or some of these other things of the world out there, you can cry out to God, and you can ask God to get it out of your mind and to help you, God, in Jesus' name. I'm going to be honest with you this morning. I go down the road or, or wake up sometime and the devil put an evil thought in my mind, but I don't dwell on it. God done showed me what to do. You just cast it out in Jesus' name. You start quoting scripture or you, I claim the blood of Jesus uh, uh, over my mind and I command you to go, Satan. 
The devil will try to tempt you with things. And let me tell you how he works. He comes at your mind first, don't he? You know, the Bible says put the helmet of salvation on. When you get saved, you put that helmet of salvation on because when you do, you got the helmet and it protects that mind. And the devil will come at your mind and try to uh, discourage you, tear you down, or he'll try to put something in your mind and say, man, you ought to do this. It'll feel good. It'll feel good. Do it, man. That's a lie of the devil. Oh, when I was in sin, there were times that... Uh, uh, it was pleasurable for just a little while, and then it went away. And then the guilt and the uncleanness and all that stuff started coming. Huh? So we stay with God. And he will help you to eliminate these things that's in your life that he has commanded you not to do. There's a lot of stuff. Oh, there's some good stuff. He's commanded you to praise him. We get to praise him. We praised him this morning, didn't we? Praise God. Because he's worthy to praise. Why? He loves you so much, and he will help you in these things that we're talking about right here. Let's look right here. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Think about it. having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against uh, you as evil do as they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Now, I'm telling you right now, be honest in everything you do. Speak good words. Don't, you don't have to curse to, 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 uh, to express yourself. You can uh, honor God and, and praise him, having your conversations honest among the Gentiles. You can uh, do the right thing in your business or whatever you do. Conduct it in the right way, and it will glorify God. That's what it'll do. No matter what you're doing, glorify God. Amen. I want people uh, to see God in me, uh, not the old me. I want the new me to be projected out. Amen. Praise God. Let's look right here a little bit further. Let's look in Romans 16, 17. It talks about troublemakers. And uh, we need to be alert, y'all, because they are troublemakers out there. These people out there don't believe in the in the. Uh, uh, the word of God, the truth that we believe in, there's a fundamental basic thing that you need to believe in, and that is what? That uh, Jesus Christ is our Savior. He died on the cross. He was buried. And he raised the third day, and he shed his blood for you and I. And the only way to get to heaven, uh, the Bible says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. That's by Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the basic fundamental stuff. If somebody's preaching other things that's wrong, you better be alert and get away from it. You don't need to be around it. If you've got a troublemaker, you better look out. Me and Joe used to run around with some of them, and, and we wouldn't the best ourselves, but we had one or two you get around there. It's always going to get in trouble, wouldn't it, Joe? And, and if you're with them, you're going to get in with them. That's right. First time me and Joe got locked up, we was with our buddy, and he got us in trouble and got us locked up. <laughs> in West City View. <laughs> I'm telling on us, I better shut up. Adam, but God got a hold of us. He cleaned us up, amen. He made us come from there to here. Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give him the praise. I want to tell y'all this morning, I never, never, never want to go back to that evil world that I was living in. I'm in the kingdom of God Almighty and I'm excited about the rewards that he has for us. That ain't why I do it though. I do it because he first loved us. Now we love him, don't we? Amen. Is that exciting? Woo, I just love it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give him a hand. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. See, he first loved us and we were sinners, and now we can love him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Almighty God. Look here, but let me tell you, stay away from them troublemakers. Let's go look at it just a little bit. Now I beseech you, brethren, make them which cause division, offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Stay away from them. I don't want to hear what they got to say to you. That's what the Word says. Now let's go in 1 Timothy 1, 9 and 10. Now I want to tell you about this. Now, you think the law was made for a righteous man? <clears throat> no, the law was not made for a righteous man. The law out there in the land is made for the, for the, for the lawbreakers, the lawless people. These people out there everywhere doing things wrong, so we had to make laws. Well, God give us laws and we need to abide by some of his commandments. That's what he said. Amen? Look at here. Let's see right here what it says. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly, for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. Now, I'm here to tell you, 
Praise God that God give us intellect, wisdom, and knowledge to make laws of the land. That came from who? Came from God, didn't it? He started it with old Moses over there. Gave him some laws, didn't he? Come down to the people. And some of the people were sinning against God, not abiding by it. And guess what? God destroyed every one of them. Well, praise God, we're here today, and the govern of our land out there, we have to have laws. Because if we don't, now let me tell you something. Who is holding back lawlessness here in the world today? The Christians are. We're the one that is the conscience of the world today. We're the one that's supposed to stand up and say, that's wrong, that's not of God, and you better stop it. Now, what is one example I'll give you today? Even our government is doing wrong. We're having abortion go all over America. 60 million babies have been aborted. That's innocent blood on our hands, people. We're supposed to stand up against that, and we are. Me and my wife goes by a little place down here on Grove Road. People goes in there for abortion, and they protest and say, please don't do it. God loves you. I'm here to tell you right now, we preached in the prison before. Sometimes we do things wrong, but God is a God of for forgiveness. Sometimes we go into prison and we preach and God will tell me. He'll say, I want you to just keep every head bowed and those who have had abortion or something, I want you to tell them I love them and I'm here uh, this uh, uh, evening to forgive them if they want to be forgiven because they're carrying a heavy burden. God forgives us. There's only one sin that's not forgiven by mankind. What is that? the blaspheme of the Holy Ghost. God, don't forgive that one. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves of mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for prejured uh, persons, and if they be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. God is telling us to do the right thing. And if you do, you've got some eternal rewards like you can't imagine. It's going to be yours. For eternity, y'all, it's going to be for eternity, praise God. Let's look a little bit further right here. And I want to talk about this one too. I'm not going to dwell on that in real long, but we'll talk about it. Look here. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. There's a lot more there too. I'm here to tell you, A-S-K, ask, seek, and knock. If there's something going on in your life and you need God to help you, ask God to help you, seek God about it, and knock on his door and guess what? He'll open the door and he'll help you in those situations because he loves you and he wants to help you. Amen? I could go a little deeper than that, but I won't. Look at here. Let's look at this uh, First John. Uh, uh, we need to ask for the backslider. I'm here to tell you this morning, each one of us in here probably has got brothers and sisters that in a backslidden condition. And God said, if you'll put in a petition, he will, he will hear you and ask life, ask life for that one. If that one has not uh, committed a, a blaspheme of the Holy Ghost or something like that, God said he hears your voice when you pray for your loved ones uh, that's lost. Look here. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that uh, we have the petitions that we desire of him. Lord, uh, save my backslidden uh, uh, children or my backslidden uh, uncles or aunts or mamas and daddies. Save them, God, in Jesus' name. Give them life, God. Give them life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now let's go a little bit further right here and look. Let's look in Matthew 24, 44. We got to be ready because God's coming. You better not be doing these things that God tells us not to do, I tell you. And if you do them, you need to ask God to help you to quit them, and he will help you quit them. The Bible says uh, he's coming uh, when you think not. He's coming, folks. He's coming. Let's look right here. Therefore, be ready, for in such an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh. We got to be ready, amen? And if you got something going on in your life and you know it's not right, you cry out to God and he will help you with it because he loves you, praise God. Amen. Let me tell you here uh, right now this morning. He's coming back, praise God. If we obey, uh, it brings rewards forever, y'all. Rewards forever. You know, and I'm not going to get in that. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, it talks, about, uh, it talks about God did not account us to wrath. We don't have to worry about that because we got God in our heart, and we're going to be with him when it starts happening. Look here. Let me, let me run this by you. Obey, they bring rewards. We got to obey some of the commandments God has given us. If we disobey, condemnation and eternal punishment is forever. You think everything's going along good and you're in something and doing something that's wrong, 
You think it won't catch up with you? It will. It's going to get you one day or another. And it's going to be eternal punishment, and it's going to go on forever and ever. But if you put Jesus in your heart, and you really mean it, and you love him, he loves you even though you were a sinner. He loves you right now. Where are you at? No matter what you've done, he'll put it under the blood because he loves you. He loves you. I'm going to ask everybody, bow your head, please. Everybody right now, and I want you to be honest with yourself. Be honest right now. God's a, if he's knocking on your heart right now, I want you to be honest. It's between you and God. If this uh, message has touched you and you're not a Christian, you want to be saved, I want you to raise your hand right now. I'm going to pray for you. Raise your hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? Raise your hand. God's knocking on your door right now. You know it. You know it. You feel him pulling you. I see that hand. He's pulling you right now. Just say yes is all you got to do. Raise your hand. I see those two hands. Anybody else? Anybody else? God loves you so much. Now, I want to uh, talk to the, keep every head bowed. Everybody on the internet, I pray that if you heard this message and you want Jesus in your heart, that he'll save you if you'll just call, call, call out to him and say, Lord, let's everybody pray this prayer. Everybody pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word, if I confess my sins, you're faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And God, I confess my sins. And Lord, I pray you just cleanse me right now. And Lord, you said in thy word that thou shalt be saved. And I praise your mighty name for saving me, God. Thank you so much. And everybody said amen. And if you said that prayer meant it's your heart, I want everybody to just give a good hand clap right now. Because you're in the kingdom. You're in the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, praise almighty God. He's a mighty God, isn't he? Uh, let's pray one more prayer. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you and praise you, God. Lord, I bind the devil from stealing this word. I pray it goes forth and bring much fruit, God.